you're Asian, that's why you're skinny. Well, it's so easy to simply generalize and assume that all Asians are skinny. But are we really? The truth is, not all Asians are skinny, especially with our fast-paced life and also convenient diet nowadays. However, if you were to compare an average American to an average Asian, we are still slimmer in size. And no, it is not 100% genetics. It has a lot to do with your lifestyle and also your food intake. So let's dive deeper and take a look at the typical Asian diet and why we are naturally slimmer. The main focus of an Asian diet is to to create wellness and to live healthier. It is not a short-term fad diet. The whole point is to create balance and also moderation, which is something I truly believe in. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to take a look at the East Asian diet. The first reason is we prefer tea or water over soft drinks. If you were to go to a Chinese restaurant, the first thing the waiter will ask you is, what type of tea do you prefer? And most restaurants will offer tea or water for free. I remember when I was living in the UK and whenever I dined out, I would ask for a warm cup of water. And most of the time, the waiter will give me a surprise look. On two occasions, the waiter told me that I was the first person to have ever asked for just plain warm water. So Chinese typically prefer warm tea or water over soft drinks. Drinking tea or water fills you up on zero calories and it helps to support your digestive system. Now, if you were to drink soft drinks together with your meals, you will be filling up on empty and bad calories, which can lead to weight gain over time. Reason number two, our portions are smaller and we use chopsticks. People tend to eat what they are served. Hence, larger portions can lead to overeating even when you're not hungry. If you have been to Asia, I'm sure the first thing you would notice are the food portions. Generally, portion servings are smaller in Asia compared to Western countries. Asians are also accustomed to family-style dining, which means we enjoy a huge variety of dishes shared by everyone. Instead of worrying about needing to finish that huge plate of food, we're more concerned about finishing our bowl of rice while enjoying a little bit of everything in bite-sized portions. Plus, the practice of eating with chopsticks means you will eat less and feel full quicker. That's because when you use chopsticks, you will take smaller mouthfuls, slowing down your speed of eating, allowing your body to digest better, and sending the signal to your brain to stop eating when you are full. So you will avoid overeating or stuffing yourself with so much food. The next reason is we enjoy real food, not processed food. Cooking and eating real food is still a very huge part of the Asian diet. Everywhere you go in Asia, eating freshly cooked street food is easily accessible and it is very cheap. On a daily basis, we eat rice or noodles served with a huge variety of vegetables, meat or fish. Instead of having processed junks such as burgers, hot dogs, fries or pizza. I remember the first time I saw my friend warming up frozen ready meals in the UK. I genuinely thought that he was preparing food for his dog without realizing that was for our dinner. <laughs> I've never seen frozen ready meals prior to that and you can just simply put it into the microwave and it's ready within five minutes. Coming from Asia, I was so used to eating freshly cooked warm food. Processed food and convenient ready meals are typically loaded with fat, sodium, sugar, and they pack lots of calories. If you eat them on a regular basis, you will feel hungrier, crave for more bad food, and you will gain weight over time. On the other hand, eating real food that's freshly cooked will provide your body with good nutrients, it will aid proper digestion, keeping you full, and you will stay slim for life. The next point is we eat on time. Most Asians typically have their breakfast between 8 to 9 a.m., their lunch between 12 to 1 p.m., and their dinner between 6 to 8 p.m. Now, if they missed one of their three important meals, they can feel cranky, lethargic, and feel like a huge part of their routine is missing. And they can even feel really shitty about it. That sounds like me. Now, if you're someone who eats on a go, chances are you will make 
poorer food choices because you would just grab whatever that's available at that moment in time and you don't have control over your food. You tend to snack a lot more on calorie-dense food as well, just to give you the energy to keep going. If you notice, Asians don't really snack. In fact, snacking is not really part of our culture. We have a set meal routine and we enjoy eating three wholesome meals. This can prevent hunger pangs or mindless snacking or overeating on your next meal. Next, we Asians take our meal time very seriously. When it is meal time, it is meal time and nothing else. That means taking a break and going for lunch with your friends at a restaurant or having dinner with your family around the dining table, not in front of the TV or your computer while watching your favorite TV show. Mealtime is mealtime. This practice helps us to eat more mindfully as we are fully present and fully engaged with our food and nothing else. Now, when you eat with distractions, you tend to eat a lot more. When our brain is so focused on other things such as working on your laptop or watching that TV show, your body can't register the feeling of satisfaction and you will eat at least 30% more. Now, if you want to stay slim without even trying, just be fully present with your food. Trust me, you will feel satisfied quicker and your food will taste so much better. Reason number six, we enjoy soups. I recently came across this statement. When eating, fill your body with 50% food. 25% liquid and keep the remaining 25% for digestion. There is so much of truth in this statement. In my previous video, I shared 10 reasons why soups can help with weight loss. So if you want to know more about the benefits of adding soups into your diet, do check it out. Soup or a soup-based dish is present in almost every Asian meal. For instance, congee is a very common breakfast to have in Asia. I personally love soup noodles. Soup fills you up very quick on very little calories and it is packed with nutrients and also vitamins. So if you can, start adding soups into your diet. You can have it as a starter or as a main meal. And you will notice that you will have less throughout the day or even for your other meals. I'm talking about broth-based or vegetable soups, not those heavy cream loaded soups. Also, we Asians enjoy a lot more fermented foods. Fermented foods such as miso, tempeh, kombucha, soya sauce, and also kimchi act as natural probiotics, keeping your gut healthy and they will also help with proper digestion. Our gut is also known as our second brain. If your gut isn't functioning at its optimum level, no matter how well you eat, your body will not be able to fully absorb all the nutrients. Hence, it would just go to waste. So adding fermented food into your diet can lead to weight loss, especially visceral fat accumulated around the abdominal organs. If you want to know more about your gut health and how it is linked to weight loss, do watch Watch my video right here. Next, our desserts are nutritious. Let's face it, most of us like to end our meal with something sweet. Chocolate? Ice cream? Cakes perhaps? Well, if you were to dine in a Chinese, Japanese or Korean restaurant, chances are at the end of your meal, they will serve you with fruits. Fruits equal dessert. Those sugary cakes, sweets or chocolates are treats and they are only served for special occasions. The traditional Chinese soup desserts, or also known as tong sui, are very nutritious and they have healing properties. For instance, sweet potato ginger soup, barley soup or red bean soup. In Asia, these desserts are widely consumed after a meal. This leads on to my final point. We use food as medicine. If you're ill, modern medical care will simply prescribe you with antibiotics without getting to the root of the problem. Pop this pill and you should feel fine within the next few hours. Now, traditional Chinese medicine will get down to the root of the problem and they will prescribe you with herbal medication to rebalance your body's system. If you have visited a herbal shop before, you will find hundreds of herbs that are used for healing purposes. Herbs and spices are also at the very heart of Asian cooking. 
Herbs and spices such as cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, coriander and chilli are widely used in Asian dishes and they have tremendous healing properties such as increasing metabolism, reducing blood pressure and also cholesterol levels. You don't need to eat Asian food every day to be healthy. You can still enjoy your cuisines and practice these principles. So eat a lot more vegetables, eat a huge variety of food, eat more real food and less processed food, drink more tea or water and reduce on your sugary drinks and eat mindfully, okay? It is all about moderation and creating balance. Too much or too little of any one thing is not good. So I hope this video has given you some insight and also useful tips in regards to the Asian diet, which you can start adopting. What other tips do you practice to stay healthy? Do let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up Share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for a lot more nutritional and also fitness tips. Do turn on your notification button so that you will get notified every time I upload a new video. All the best!